a lot of people lately told me that their financial situation is a main source of their depression and their anxiety. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this video and how to get over it. So make sure that you stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And yes, money, financial situations, all these things are the main source of anxiety and depression for most people. Like, not some, but most people. So make sure that you do me a favor when you're done watching this video, or right now, be sure to share it on social media so maybe some other people can get some help for their depression and their anxiety when it comes to their finances. First off, I wanna say that I get it. Like, most of the videos I do here, like, I do them because because I've been through them personally, all right? I made this channel so I can provide solutions that have helped me so now they can help you. And a lot of them, I use scientific backing and things like that with it, okay? But like my whole life, like I've never been financially like really like secure. Like never like a lot. Like I never had like parents who like bought me the car, you know, or I didn't even know if we were gonna be able to stay in the home that we were living in. You know what I mean? Um, even as an adult, like, because of my parents' bad habits, I've never learned how to save money properly, um, constantly in debt, all sorts of things. So like, I get it. I get how this can be the main source of depression and anxiety for a lot of people. But the thing is, the thing is, is that right now, as of today, I make a lot less money than I ever did in my entire life. I am making half the money that I used to make. If I'm being honest, less than half the money that I used to make, and I'm happier than I've ever been. So I feel that I have a little bit of advice that I can help you all out with when it comes to your financial situations and what is keeping you so stressed and so depressed. The first thing, the first thing that we have to address is how you are working at a job that you absolutely hate to make sure that you can afford the stuff that you don't even need. We have to talk about that. And please be sure to check out the info card. I did a very detailed video on a book called Lost Connections. I dive a little bit more into this topic in a different way, so please go check out that video. But one of our major issues Issues is that we live in this society where there is this line that is blurred between our wants and our needs. And it's just something that happens in a society that's constantly telling us what we need, what we need to get, what we want, and who we need to be, and what we need to look like, and how we look better towards other people. Like all these things, this is constantly being thrown in our face, left and right, with every single ad on earth, as well as the fact that most of us compare ourselves to other people. We're constantly thinking about the things that we need, need to make us happy. So let's talk about this real quick. Let's get really honest, okay? You won't leave the job that you're at, even though you hate it and it makes you miserable, because if you left that job, even though it's a good paying job, if you left that job, how are you supposed to pay for all these things that make you happy, right? Like you need to make a certain amount of money. There's that word need again. Pay attention, we're gonna talk about a, a lot about needs. Like if I sat here and told you, if I sat here and told you that you need to take a $10,000 pay cut today your immediate thought would be that you're gonna be homeless on the streets. If you stop making $10,000 a year, you will be homeless. That is a fact, cut and dry, that's the way it is. So how are you ever supposed to leave this job? Because you can't be homeless, you have kids to feed. You need to pay for your car, you need to pay for groceries. How can you possibly take a $10,000 pay cut? Well, let's break it down real quick and let's just use an example of, I don't know, let's say, $60,000, okay? You are making $60,000 a year. So if you made $50,000, you'd be homeless, right? Let's take a step back. Let's take a step back and really look at this situation, okay? Let's look at the house you live in, okay? How much does that house cost you? Where is this house? Is it a nice part of town or a bad side of town? And what is a bad side of town, right? And why do you have that house? Is it for you? Is it for the safety? Because these are real things, right? Like when we talk about safety, yes, that is a concern. But let's really look at the situation, all right? The car that you have, you need a car. How are you supposed to get to work if you don't have a car? How are you supposed to take the kids to soccer, to doctor's appointments, you know, all these things if you don't have a car? But let's look at the type of car that you drive. Is it a car that is meant to get you from point A to point B? Or is it a car that you really, really wanted, right? This car that you just absolutely needed. There's that word need again right? What kind of car is it? How much are you paying for that car? Okay? Now, that car that you park at the house, what's inside your house? What kind of furniture do you have? What kind of TV do you have? 
What kind of other things do you have in that house? How much were those things? How many of these things are there so they look nice and they look pretty when other people come over so they know that you have your life together, right? You need those things, don't you? There's that word need again. So again, like we're talking about here, our brains have a screwed up time trying to differentiate between wants and needs. Wants and needs, wants and needs, right? So the first thing I really, really want you to do, there's a very small, simple task. I teach my clients how to do this all the time, okay? Get a list, get a piece of paper, and have one column for wants, one column for needs, okay? Write down all of your needs and then write all the things that you want, okay? After you're done writing this list, I want you to take another look at your needs and see how many of those you can really move over to the wants side, okay? After that, take another look at this list. Look at that list, take another look at your needs and see how many more of those needs can you move over to the wants. All right, do this two or three times. See how many things you can start moving over to the, from the needs pile to the wants pile. Now you're starting to get some clarity. Now you're starting to see that that car you have is a want, not a need, it is a want, right? What would happen if you sold that car and got a reliable car? Not an amazing car, not the best car in the neighborhood, not the car that's gonna impress your friends and your family, not that car, but the car that takes you where you need to go, right? The house, that beautiful, beautiful house that you've waited your whole life to have. What would happen if you downsized? What would happen if you got a smaller place? What would, you, what would happen if you got the same size place but in a different neighborhood? What would happen? As you start to look at these different financial situations that you're already in and how you can possibly adjust them and see that your mental filter is telling you that you need these things when you really just want them, you'll start to see that you have a lot more room to breathe. You'll start to see now that your needs are actually wants, now you'll start to look at your job in a much different way. You'll start to see your job as something that you don't have to be at, but you've been stuck under this spell that you have to be at this job because of the things that you need to pay for because you need them, right? So I really, really hope that you practice this exercise, but we're not done yet. There's one more thing that we really need to address, okay? The next one, I'm gonna have to clap at you real quick. Stop putting yourself in financially bad situations, all right? So this is something I need to make an entire new video on, but we're gonna talk about it really quickly here, okay? Because of what we just talked about in the first segment right there about the difference between wants and needs, a lot of people are putting themselves in very, very bad financial situations. I see this happen all the time. I see my friends do this constantly. I see my clients do it constantly. I see all of you do it constantly, right? You're sad, you're lonely, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're worried. Just all these different things going on in your head. Then all of a sudden you see that car. That car. If I could just if I could just have that car, then everything would be fine, right? So you go out, you go to the dealership and oh my god, they approved you. They approved you for that car. What? You don't gotta put down a gigantic down payment, that's awesome, but the down payment is still a little bit more than you can afford, right? The next thing you know, we we're talking about monthly payments, and you were thinking like, how how much can you squeeze into a monthly payment, right? How much, how, okay, cool, I don't know, $400? Yeah, I guess I can do $400, yeah, I guess, right? But you know what, that salesman and the finance department, they're amazing, and they take it down to $350, $350. Oh my Lord, that is amazing, right? So you leave out of there with this brand new car, you got the payments you wanted, you didn't even have to put down a fat down, down payment, but now, it's three months later. It's three months later, and now you're stressing about money. And that car payment notification comes through your email, if you're paperless, or it might come through the actual mail. And now you're looking at this car payment, you're like, oh my God, there goes $350. Why did I get this car, right? So that thing you bought for that instant gratification, for that gratification that didn't last you as long as you wanted to, now it is a source of your stress, of your anxiety right? And now that you can't afford it, or now that you do pay it because you don't want to ruin your credit, right? Now you're depressed. Now you're depressed because you're broke. Now you're driving that sad vehicle everywhere you go. This thing that you just had to buy for that temporary gratification. Same thing with the house, right? Same thing with the house, or same thing with that job. You chose that job because you can make more money, and if you make more money, you can buy more stuff. And if you could only buy more stuff, then you would be happier, right? 
But now, you're depressed to go to work. You get into the car that you can't afford. You drive to the job that you hate. And then you leave work later that day. You have a sad drive home because you had an awful day at work. You pull up to the house that's way too expensive. You go inside, you sit on that expensive couch you bought. You watch that expensive TV and you are just sad and depressed. You see where I'm going with this? You see how these things that we're constantly chasing after, it's like having that carrot at the end of the stick, right? And we're just constantly running towards it. That's what a lot of us are doing. So something that we really need to do is reconnect with our values, okay? We need to really reconnect with what is important with us. We need to get disillusioned from this idea that things and stuff and money are, are what's going to make us happy. You know what I mean? Like, I mentioned this in another video and maybe someday I'll do it. Maybe someday I will take this camera off the tripod and take you on a tour of my neighborhood. It's not great. It is not great by any means. I drive a little Scion IA, right? And like, these are the things that I do and I am just happier than I've ever been because I've been able to separate my wants from my needs. I've also figured out a way to work through these impulses I have to buy things that I can't afford because I understand the poor financial situations that they'll put me in. I know that buying that next thing is going to be a very temporary fix to my long-term problem. And once I can realize that, I have already gotten rid of some of my biggest triggers. You know what I mean? So, again, like I said at the beginning of this video, like, please share this. Please share this with other people. Like, this is probably one of the most important videos I've ever made because so many people struggle with this. So quit being selfish. Make sure you share it with somebody, okay? Not even somebody, just post it on Facebook. Do your thing on there, okay? But anyways, do me a favor. Leave a comment down below. Let's do this. I think this will be motivating for everybody. Let's do this. Leave a comment down below on something that you realized is a want and not a need. Let's everybody, down below, let's all talk about what we moved over from our needs list over to our wants list. I think this is gonna be amazing, all right? But anyways, if you like this video, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and just stumbled across this video, I don't know what you're waiting for, click that little round subscribe button. I'm always making videos to help you out with this thing up here. If you got some time, click or tap on one of those thumbnails, check out some other videos on this channel, all right? Thanks so much for watching. Start figuring out the difference between your wants and your needs, and I'll see you next time.